I think we've all probably engaged in this kind of foolishness at least once or twice in our life um, where you don't seem to have the right tool for the job. So you just take a random tool that you have and try your damnedest to make that tool do the work of another tool. Uh, this is kind of my opinion when it comes to answering the question of does Wing Chun work for MMA? So as you guys know, I'm both a mixed martial arts instructor, but I also run um, at least twice a week a Wing Chun class along with I also teach private lessons in Wing Chun as well. So why is it that so often people try to make Wing Chun work for MMA and it just fails miserably? Uh, if you type in Wing Chun versus onto YouTube, You'll be hard pressed to find maybe one or two videos of Wing Chun actually winning in an MMA match. Most of the time, you're seeing just people getting the snot knocked out of them. It's not even close. The MMA fighter almost always obliterates the Wing Chun fighter. And a lot of Wing Chun instructors will sit there and they'll tell you the problem is that the people who are doing the Wing Chun are novices or that they aren't doing the Wing Chun properly, which it is sort of true. It is, I, I'll be honest, most, I've never seen these guys doing what I would consider good Wing Chun. Um, but then again, I think engaging in the practice of fighting in a mixed martial arts scenario with Wing Chun, I think inherently is bad Wing Chun. So what, what was Wing Chun actually made for? Well, if we look historically at Wing Chun, um, it's really gray. It's really muddy down with a lot of um, legend, a lot of folklore. Because it's really hard to sit there and tell you exactly what the truth is about the history of Wing Chun, we can look at at least the common thread. And the common thread is that Wing Chun was developed to teach a young woman how to win a challenge match against a... Um, unwanted suitor, basically. And as far as what the rules of that match were, um, it's pretty likely that it was the rules of Chinese challenge matches, which nowadays we use the term Sanda or Sancho to discuss these matches. So what are the rules of that match? Well, usually when it came to challenge matches, you could win by a knockout. You could win if the person just gave up. Um, or you can win with a ring out. And if the fight went to the ground, then the fight would be stand, stood back up. So takedowns were allowed, so you're allowed to do a throw, but if both parties were on the ground, somebody would stand you back up. And so this is kind of the scenario in which Wing Chun was born. You also have to look at Wing Chun's development, that as Wing Chun was developing, its major birth of growth happens in uh, two very distinct areas. That One, it happens on the Red Junk Opera, which are these little tiny boats that travel from port to port carrying supplies for um, operas. And if you've ever been in the body of a boat, if you've ever been in a boat, you know it's a very tight quarter space. So, you know, it, it would be equivalent to trying to learn how to fight in a closet. And then the other area that Wing Chun was kind of brought up is in um, the cities of China. And once again, these are remarkably tight spaces. Even if you look at the Wing Chun Athletic Association, it itself is effectively a large walk-in closet, at least as far as the videos of it I've seen. Um, there's not a lot of space. And so Wing Chun itself, from basically its birth all the way to now, was being fought in these really tight, close spaces where creating any kind of distance wasn't possible and it was fought under a rule set that any kind of really advanced grappling was frowned upon. And so that's where Wing Chun really comes from. And so understanding that will help you understand why Wing Chun doesn't succeed all that well in the modern MMA space. A modern MMA space is very large, open, area um, and the rules of MMA allow people to do takedowns and allow people to stay on the ground 
And so as a result, a lot of the tools that Wing Chun uses are kind of thwarted because if I want to, I can create space and eliminate the Wing Chun person's ability to bridge the gap because at no point do I have to run into a wall. And if I don't want to engage in that middle range with a Wing Chun person and I don't want to be at that long range, I can always bridge the gap and execute a takedown. And then once again, that's going to give me the advantage because what I want to reiterate this, that Wing Chun was developed for challenge matches. Um, you can say all day long that Wing Chun is a self-defense art, and that's fine if that's what you believe. But as far as the legends are concerned, as far as the stories that are told, it seems like Wing Chun was mostly developed into challenge match scenarios. That the origin story is about a girl having a challenge match with an unwanted suitor. We know for a fact that a lot of Wing Chun was developed in these Red Junk operas where they would basically agree to spar with people. We know for a fact that a lot of the Wing Chun practitioners um, in kind of the early days of what you call modern Wing Chun would have challenge matches on rooftops where, once again, people would form a tight circle and kind of keep them very, very close. And if the fight went to the ground, they were stood back up. So Wing Chun is really developed for those scenarios. And I think under those scenarios, Wing Chun does quite well. But the thing is, it's not the tool for MMA. Wing Chun is designed for exactly those scenarios. And the fact is, if you have a tool, you want to use that tool for what it's designed for. And if you have a task that you need to have done, you want to use the proper tool for the task. So what am I saying? Am I saying that Wing Chun has no place in MMA? No. Am I saying that Wing Chun is all you need in MMA? Absolutely not. I think you need to understand what Wing Chun was made for and respect it for what it is. That Wing Chun was designed for very, very close quarters combat and it was also designed to be stood back up if the fight went to the ground. And so as a result, Wing Chun does, it has plenty of tools to fight in that close range. It has plenty of tools to, to prevent the takedown, but it doesn't have many tools to really bridge a huge gap it doesn't have a lot of tools to get back up. And this is just, this is just really the facts. Um, and I know some Wing Chun practitioners will disagree with me on this, but I, I'm, show me, show me the proof. Show me all these hundreds of, hundreds of videos of Wing Chun people just beating the snot out of MMA fighters. I think Wing Chun works very well in those tight quarter ranges. I think Wing Chun works where it's designed to work. But that also brings me to using your, your tool. So I've heard it said that a good carpenter should be able to put drive a nail with two swings. One swing to set the nail, one swing to drive it in. Um, I am not a good carpenter. Usually it takes me three or four swings to put a nail in. And a terrible car carpenter will sit there doing like this. So it's all, it's not just about the tool that you use, it's also about how you use the tool. So there's also the other aspect of using Wing Chun that I think is happening all across the world is that people don't use the tool properly. I've gone to Wing Chun seminars, I've trained with Wing Chun people, and every single time there's any kind of competition, where do they go? What do they do for competition? Chi Sao. They do Chi Sao. And Chi Sao is a valid form of competition, but it is not an analog for fighting. That Chi Sao will help develop a very specific part of your fighting game, but it will not help you in your overall fighting game. It's only going to develop a single tiny little spot in the overall arcing, I guess, matrix of what an actual fight is. The thing is, if you're studying Wing Chun and you aren't putting on gloves, getting hit and being hit, and I'm not talking about, you know, um, standing there like this and both parties are doing Wing Chun punches, I'm talking about, about you're practicing against boxers, against kickboxers, against 
um, mixed martial artists, against wrestlers, against jujitsu players. If you aren't studying how to deal with those pressures, then why on earth would you think you just suddenly magically know how to deal with those pressures when they're put in front of you? The thing is, the first time someone uses a hammer, they suck at it, you know, um, and then they get progressively better. Um, and, and you get to the point where I am, where um, I can drive the nail in three or four swings and eventually get to the point, if you're really good, where it takes you two swings, one to set, one to drive, right? But that takes time and that takes familiarity with all the situations that could arise while hammering in a nail, right? That same thing goes with Wing Chun. That if you are studying Wing Chun and the only time you ever spar is either you're doing Qi Sao or you're doing Wing Chun versus Wing Chun, no, you aren't going to learn how to fight against other styles. The only way to do that is to actually do it. Uh, there's an old saying in teaching where we say that experience is the ultimate teacher. And it's 100% true. That if you want your Wing Chun to be functional, then you have got to get out there and play with people. You've got to put on gloves, get hit, you got to lose and be okay with losing, and then continue to analyze and adapt as needed. But you also have to make sure you aren't doing this. You also have to make sure you aren't trying to use your Wing Chun for a job that Wing Chun wasn't designed for. If you're somebody who every single time you try to spar with somebody, they take you to the ground, well, it might behoove you to also take up wrestling, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or Judo, something that will teach you how to deal with the ground. If you're somebody who the person always stays at a distance and you can't get them close to you, Yes, Chum Q has some tools to bridge that gap, but there are other arts such as Muay Thai um, or French Savat that does a lot better job at bridging that gap and getting you into that Wing Chun range that you want. The thing is, you cannot expect to build a house if all you have is a hammer. And you cannot expect to deal with the world of modern mixed martial arts, mixed being the operative word here, if you yourself only have the one art. Can Wing Chun win? Absolutely. In the same way that I can eventually drive this nail with this. I can. Um, we've all done it, right? Everybody's done this stupid thing where we don't have the right tool and we just make it work. But it's easier if you use the right tool. It's easier if you use the right tool. And so this is, this is kind of the point I'm making is that I think Wing Chun is very effective for what it was designed to do. And I think the mistake that a lot of people make is that they try to use Wing Chun in the areas that it wasn't designed for. This isn't me apologizing for Wing Chun at all. If anything, you could even say that it's a flaw in Wing Chun. But I think it's important to understand that Wing Chun is not without value. And this is a mistake I think so many people make is that they will study the art of Wing Chun go and get their ass kicked, and then decide Wing Chun is completely without value. And the thing is, you're always going to get your ass kicked. It's a part of learning. It's a part of developing yourself as a martial artist. If you show me an instructor who says he's never lost a fight, I will either tell you he is a liar or he hasn't had enough matches to be allowed to teach. And I really mean that. So it's either one or the other. Either he's been in three fights and he happened to win, or he's been in a lot of fights and isn't telling you about the times that he lost. Because for sure, as you develop as a martial artist, you're going to lose. That's a part of the process. And it's okay, because there's a lot more to be learned from those losses. But when it comes to Wing Chun, you've got to respect it for what it is and not try to turn it into something that it's not. So that's kind of my two cents on the subject or my whole dollar. I don't know. This is a longer video, but hopefully that kind of helps clear the air about some of the ways that I view Wing Chun and its function as it is served in our school. To me, Wing Chun is a tool. It is a part of your toolbox. And when you need that specific tool is when you pull it out and you don't try to use that tool for something it wasn't designed for. That's kind of my opinions of it. So if you're interested in coming to study with me in Wing Chun or any other art that we teach at the School of Self-Defense and you live in the Indianapolis area, 
All the information to do so is on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. If you live too far away to train with us in person, we also have training opportunities via our Patreon. So head on over to our Patreon, sign up for, for that, and uh, we can start training distance-wise. And of course, be sure to check us out on all the social medias, which are going to be here. Pow. Um, and until next time, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Bye, Dom.